said that there was Snoop trivia in the room and Dressler didn't get a single answer right. Perhaps it's sour <laughs> grapes, but we couldn't tell, obviously, with their connection for that touchdown just a little bit earlier. Yes, he is the envy, and he has the ball. Randall will bump about around the 50-yard line, and Darian Durant is now eight for his last nine. Two touchdowns in that in 93 yards. Yeah, let, but let's be clear on the on the Snoop Dogg trivia. Dressler didn't know a song. <laughs> so, but Snoop Dogg knew which jersey to wear in Saskatchewan. And I and I'm guessing it's safe to say the fans went nuts in Saskatoon when they saw him come over. Second and six. Short drop and he'll step up and gets down in a hurry. And another late flag. And what's this? McCoy was there. And McCoy isn't sure what it's all about. Let's see if it is McCoy that was targeted. Looks like it is. Piling on, Calgary, number 90. That's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic, first down. And that notepad of John Huffnagels gets longer. Well, you know, and this one's going to be probably the closest of all of them. You know, Durant scrambling to his right. And you can see from behind, McCoy's coming, and there's a hook slide down. He kind of lies down beside him, falls over top of him. That one's probably the, the weakest of all of them. But, but when you've had three or four like this, I think now the officials are human, and they're watching for stuff like that. Now Sheets. Bubbles back, cuts back, and right into the traffic, Jawan Simpson shuts him down. You know, with the, the 148-yard gallop, otherwise, yeah, Simpson and company have done a decent job on Sheets tonight. Well, they have. I mean, after the half, it was just 53 yards rushing for Corey Sheets, 48 on that one play where he got outside, got it down to the goal line. So they were doing a pretty good job, just two big runs, one from Durant, one from Sheets in the first half. The Calgary Stampeders just have to stop hurting themselves. Loss of one, second, and a bunch. Six pack of receivers for Durant. And across the middle, left from Hill has the catch. It's a first down, but I think this one's coming back on a penalty against Saskatchewan. Holding call against the Rough Riders. Holding Saskatchewan, number 59. That's a 10-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Right tackle, Chris Patrick. He's working on Charleston Hughes, and Hughes tries a spin move on him. And when he does, he's he, he grabs him. Right tackle, Chris Patrick. Up, spin move inside, grabs him there, turns him with the jersey. And once that jersey pulls away from the body, then no question the flag comes out from the official. Second down over on the Rough Rider side of half. It's second and 21. Grant getting that one in out of the reach of Dressler incomplete. So this time the penalty parade against Calgary doesn't bite them. But Torrey Davis in the middle. Torrey Davis in the middle was in another fist fight or a pushing match at the very least with Dominic McCard and the officials let this one go. Just take your attention to the center here. Dominic McCart's going to go out and help out on him. And right there, look at the punching match going back and forth. They let that one go. Line drive, one hopper to Taylor. And great downfield cover again. Flying down there was Craig Butler to disrupt that return. Our sack tally brought to you by Pure Later, tackling hunger across Canada. Check and congratulations to Rough Rider fans who donated 57,000 pounds last Saturday. And this week, tackle hunger night is in BC tomorrow night. Brent Johnson, who will be honored tomorrow, will mm -hmm. be part of those tackle hunger festivities prior to the game. 
down by 13. Another flag. Seen a lot of nylon here in this second half and a pass off the fingertips of Nick Lewis and were there two receivers in the same spot for Calgary. Yeah, there was and this one was offside against Saskatchewan. Offside, Saskatchewan, number 41. Five yard penalty, repeat, first down. Tyron Brackenridge. Just under five and a half minutes left here in this third quarter. First and five, Stampeders. Rob Cote in the offense, and he wants to lead the blocks to corners, but nothing doing off that left side. And again, will they be able to generate much on the ground without Sumpas in on that offensive line. Well, they've had to bring in Mark DeWitt, who normally would play center for John Gott when John Gott had injury situation early on in the season. It looks like DeWitt's can play that right guard spot. Demetrius has been thrown out. There's Gott and DeWitt side by side with Middleton at left guard. No gain, so second and five. Glenn swings it out, Mark Quay McDaniel to catch, bumped out at the first down stick by Chris McKenzie. And could force Dave Dickinson calling the plays to go to a quicker passing game like we saw on that one. It was just second and five, so that play would obviously is a good call for that scenario. But whether it's first and ten or second and long, try and get the ball out of Kevin Glenn's hands quicker and then hope that his receivers can make the plays in the open field. Rob Cote is going to bring in the play from the sidelines. Well, and that's another way to help bring in a fullback either in the backfield or line Rob Cote up as a tight end, which he often does, and it widens the corner against guys like Brent Hawkins and Odell Willis. So first down at the 25. Roll to the right side, and another catch for McDaniel. And another first down across the 35, fifth catch of the game. One thing about Kevin Glenn and his adjustment to the Calgary offense, he has been a former teammate of four different Calgary receivers. McDaniel and Bauman in Hamilton, Robbie Bryant and R.J. Franklin in Winnipeg. Should be some chemistry there. Just quickly show you that reason you bring in a tight end. Makes it a little tougher for Odell Willis to track him down from the backside. Long way to go. 11 for McDaniel. And another quick one. Corners drops the ball. Ruled incomplete. John Cornish just doesn't look on his game, does he? Well, you know, I he did in that first week, but he played because Lamarcus Coker was out of the was a healthy scratch that week, so he played every rep. And you know, most running backs will tell you that it's in the second half, late once they played the entire game, that they really feel like they're getting in their groove and. When he's been rotating now with LaMarcus Coker, you're right. It just doesn't seem the same. Second and 10. Then over the middle. Completion made. Nick Lewis converts again at midfield. Third, second down conversion catch for Nick Lewis on the night. This is called football IQ. Not necessarily using his size or speed or route running or anything like that. Just taking a look at the defense, seeing that it's a zone defense, and then sitting down in the hole of that zone. Number 12 in CFL history in catches. Here's Cornish straight ahead, and Shamari Williams will help toss him down. Well, they're going to have to lean on Nick Lewis big time to come back in this game. He's their money receiver. Another big game for him tonight. 
And usually when he's catching the ball, the chains are moving forward. We talked about that early on. A couple first down catches here tonight and a touchdown. And the Stamps have something going here. This is the eighth play of the drive. They're into Rough Rider territory. Second and six. Time for Glenn. And the pass complete. It's another first down catch for McDaniel. Well, I think that's his third in this drive. That's the that's the chemistry. And that's the heads up play by Marquay McDaniel. First of all, the chemistry. Watch how he comes off the line in here. But I want to show you the top of the route and how important it is that Marquay comes back to the football. He's going to come back and take an extra step back there. That little step gets the separation on Terrell Mays he needs. That's the chemistry between Glenn and McDaniel. Back to Cornish. Glenn to the other side. Low delivery. McDaniel off his shoe tops has the catch. Short yardage. Top receiver for Calgary and Montreal with four catches and 85 yards. And he has been active again tonight. Winning the starting job in week two after Landon Talley started the year. Well, coming into this week two, he had the second best average in the top 10 of the receivers listed in the stats for the CFL. Best average was Brian Bratton in Montreal, but McDaniel had that 18.4 yard average coming in, which means he's getting the ball deep too. Stamps try to keep this drive alive. Kevin Glenn downfield, one of Bryant. And overshoots the intended target. Well, Bryant is not one to complain or make a fuss whether he's touched or pushed or grabbed at all. I thought that Nick Graham might have got away with one here. I thought there was a little grab and tug at the top of this route. Little inside cut. He's okay so far. No penalty there. I thought that right there might draw a flag as it turned the shoulder of Robbie Bryant, but a penalty flag on the field and Bryant did not argue so Rene Paredes will come on it'll be a 44 yard attempt and El Matador kneels that and now a 10 point game well last week Calgary let go a 12 point lead with less than three minutes to go they're down by 10 here with a whole quarter left. You know, fa fairly similar stats in the top half of those columns, but uh, penalties, a big difference here in this game tonight. Calgary taking some bad ones. And, and again, now we've gone three games and three quarters for Saskatchewan, no turnovers, but Calgary hasn't turned it over in this one tonight either. No, it's impressive what Saskatchewan's done protecting the football. We know it's going to end, and somebody's going to say it was our fault for bringing it up <laughs> again, sure. but... Uh, but that is impressive that they've gone, what, 15 quarters now? Without... Absolutely, and, it, and it's, it's, you know, that kind of game where one of those turnovers could be a big difference maker. As it was last week in Montreal. Absolutely. Interception from Kevin Glenn. So we start the fourth quarter, second and 12, Saskatchewan. At the 33-yard line. Seam right, gets left, first down. He's had a big night, as he so often does at McMahon. Fifth catch for Chris gets and up near midfield. Well, we showed you Nick Lewis doing it. And gets left. Look how he his angle to stem outside. And the reason he went so far outside on that stem was to pull the linebacker Malik Jackson out there with him and then sneak him behind him. Got off to a shaky start last year, was determined to change that this season and has he ever 17th catch of the season touchdown here tonight first down and wide open Jordan Cisco has a catch that's his first of the night had a couple for 53 yards against BC and with Rob Bag gone on to the nine game Cisco becomes a more important part of this Saskatchewan offense yes he's going to get a lot more playing time Darian Durant's got a lot of time to throw and find him on the sideline take a look at that protection up front and you wonder if the Calgary Stampeders are going to have to start to send some pressure maybe linebacker pressure maybe from the secondary Durant's got lots of time waits finds Jordan Cisco open on the sideline 
Well, it was heartbreaking news when we heard about Rob Bag yesterday placed yeah. on the nine game. It really is, and a I, third ACL injury. Yeah, and I, I sent out a little Twitter message to both him and Buck Pierce, similar guys that you just feel for because they're so hard working and tough guys and they just had bad luck when it comes to injuries. First down Rough Riders, four receivers wide side, Durant the other way and Tristler has the catch. Working on Brandon Smith and Durant shaking up as he got hit releasing the football. He's just trying to regroup now because does he have an issue with his cup? Yeah, you his wonder eye. if he got poked in the eye here. And now he calls off Drew Willie. He's going to try and hang in there. Well, and the, like we mentioned, the Calgary Stampeders, where they're going to start coming with some pressure. Well, they do. Here comes Eric Frazier, the safety, and Malik Jackson, the linebacker, to get that pressure on Durant and start to make him a little more uncomfortable. He just got a shot. Malik Jackson off the edge. Hands it off to Sheets. And he'll pound straight ahead for five. Davis there. Well, we wish the best of luck for Rob Bag in his, in his rehab. He's come back from the same injury on the other leg a couple of times. So he knows the protocol. He knows the procedure. And... We wish him the best of luck. We did ask to speak with him. He says it's kind of an emotional time right now. He preferred not to discuss it. But amazingly, he finished the game and actually practiced this week on a torn ACL. That's the kind of guy he is. Second and five. Durant, 11 of his last 13. He's going to pull this down and brought down at the 13 yard line. He's got another first down. Drove the lane. Sure did. Like it was one of those situations where he didn't have a comfortable passing lane to step up into like Matt Dunnigan talked right at the beginning. Now he sees that open up and he thinks, hey, you know, this is easier to run for the first down. Take it up the middle. Justin Phillips rallies to get to him. First down at the 13. To the sidelines for Ephraim Hill. She'll try and cut back, cut loose. One Jing, and where are they going to mark him? Touchdown! What a play by Ephraim Hill! Well, he was close to that sideline, but I think he stayed in bounds the entire time. You mentioned earlier on that he's got a little bit of pressure. In fact, he and Justin Harper, the two import receivers in this lineup outside a dresser who's just fine, have got a little pressure. This will be reviewed by the command center as all scoring plays are with Terrence Jeffers Harris signed to the Riders recently this week, but I think he stayed inside. They're going to review it. That is spectacular, too. I thought the first time he might have stepped out of bounds, but did he down here by the goal line oh, right there? That still looks like there may be green, and you might need a bigger screen than the one we have to tell yeah boy that is sensational it's amazing what a guy on the depth chart behind you will do to light a fire on an athlete 